the first question every runner is asking themselves during summer is why on earth are we running in this heat but believe it or not training in the heat actually has a lot of benefits to make you a faster runner not only in hot races but even in cooler races hi my name is lisa i'm an online running coach and also an ultra trail runner and in this video i will break down the science behind heat training we will be talking about the benefits the risks but also the amazing adaptations that your body goes through and yes all the research that i'm using in this video i will also link below if you are interested in checking it out more for yourself so what actually happens when you are running in the heat one of the biggest changes is the expansion of the plasma volume plasma is the fluid portion of your blood and according to an article in the british journal of medicine this plasma makes it easier for your body to pump oxygen to your muscles which will improve overall cardiovascular efficiency there is also evidence that running in the heat can improve your vo2 max your lactate threshold and even your efficiency as a runner a huge meta-analysis of 96 studies in 2016 found out that time to exhaustion increased by 23 percent time trail performance increased by 7 percent and VO2 max even went up by 6%. So that is a huge improvement with only a little bit more heat exposure. However, heat acclimatization isn't just about plasma volume. It's also a way on how to learn your body, how to sweat more efficiently. Your skin also gets better at releasing it because the more you practice it, the better it becomes. And overall, your pore temperature will stay lower during exercising. And this adaptation actually kicks in surprisingly fast. For men, this is around day five to heat exposure, but for women, it takes a little bit more around eight to 10 days. But then the biggest question, how do you actually train safely in the heat? Because it's not just going out for a run at the hottest time of the day, because that is rather dangerous. So first of all, active heat acclimatization is the golden standard. And that means that for around 60 to 90 minutes a day, for a consistency of 10 days straight, you're going to be training around 30 degrees more or less. But then you also have the passive methods like sitting in a sauna or taking a hot bath after workout. And the benefit of this is that you can already start implementing these during winter so that by the time that the real heat comes during summer, your body is already more used to it. And that's actually what I've been seeing in the top athletes this winter, that for example, what they were doing is when they were training indoors on a treadmill or even cycling that they would put on extra layers or obviously those athletes had a special suit they could put on but you as a normal athlete you can also try to get the same effect with just putting on two or three extra layers because what you want is that the core temperature of your body starts increasing more so your body already starts working and finding more efficient ways on how to cool down but of course the risks are real especially with the active method heat exhaustion dehydration and even heat stroke can sneak up very quickly therefore a good rule of thumb is adapt gradually start with shorter sessions so not all of a sudden the 60 or 90 minutes but more, maybe like 30 minutes 45 minutes etc hide it well which is super important before during and after and also consider electrolyte support if needed according to studies most of the benefits start showing up within two weeks so there's no need to push yourself from day one because it will only sabotage you performance and there is a cool part to it as well heat training won't only help in hot races so the same meta analyst that i mentioned earlier has shown that all the benefits also carry on in cooler environments so that is perfect if you have like a fall marathon or half marathon or any other race planned runners often notice a lower heart rate lower core temperature and a better efficiency at any given pace so basically it's kind of like free fitness if you do it right so to just recap everything that i just said training in the heat will expand your plasma and this consequently will improve your v2 max lactate threshold and also your efficiency as a runner but the key is to acclimate gradually monitor hydration and also be mindful of the risks that are involved with this type of training what i would give as a bonus tip is that you can already start doing this during winter with just putting on some extra layers when you're on a treadmill or on your indoor bike and then it will really make a huge difference when the hotter summer temperatures are coming but 
Now I also just want to hear a little bit from you. Have you ever tried heat training or are you considering trying it after watching this video? I'm very excited to hear your answer so please let me know in the comments below and if you found this video helpful then hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and also yeah follow me for more science-backed evidence videos. As I told you before all the research that I use for compiling this video you can also find in the description below and yeah thanks for watching and good luck with this new training approach.